Whether you're looking at visiting Florida for a vacation or you already live here and you're just looking for a fresh spot to go ahead and check out, this video's for you. I wanna share with you guys 10 cool places I think are worth visiting in Florida. Last year in 2021, I had the privilege of doing a road trip around the entire state, which I did document here on the channel, and I will leave a link for that playlist down in the description below if you wanna see all the places I visited. But in today's video, I wanna share with you guys some of the best spots I think you should check out. Of course, there's more than 10 best places to visit in Florida, but these are the ones I think should be at the top of your list. Okay, so this list is not going to be in any particular order. I just threw it together and let's jump into it. The first one I think you should check out is Key West, Florida. Now, I myself have only been there one time, but it was kind of a mixed bag experience for me. On the one hand, it was a really cool place in the sense that it's a very charming small little town, really kind of on the edge of the ocean, surrounded by water, and there's a lot of cool history and culture there. There are plenty of sightseeing tours to do, like the little train ride around town, as well as some of the nighttime ghost tours. And if you're into bar hopping and shopping, right on the main drag is Duval Street, and there's just a lot of fun to be had staying there for a few days, I would say. I don't think you really need to stay in Key West more than a few days because it is such a small area and probably within three, four days max, you can pretty much see and do everything there is to do and see in Key West. But because it is such a unique little area in Florida, I do recommend checking it out. Some of the cons of Key West though are that, you know, down Duval Street, since it is a very bar heavy area, I mean, you literally can't walk down the main drag there without having the smell of cigarette smoke permeating the air. And I thought that was really annoying, especially if you're not a smoker. You know, I personally don't like smelling that. And it just seems to be everywhere down there since there's such a big party scene. People are hanging out outside because you can't smoke inside the bars, so they smoke on the street. So that was kind of a downer for me. Also, I'm a beach person. I really love the beach. And to me, the beaches there in Key West are really not the greatest. The water is very shallow, and especially if you go in the summertime, uh, the water is basically hot. It's like a bath. So it's shallow, you can't really get all the way in. And to top that all off, the sea floor there is very rough. There's a lot of rocks and you know dead coral and things like that on the sea floor. So walking into the ocean there can be pretty painful at times. So if you're into the beach, Key West is not really the best place to go for a vacation. But if you're into some of the cool party scenes they have there, like you know the bar or uh, Fantasy Fest or some of the other things that they have going on there, if that's your thing, you probably do want to check it out. And there's kind of like two Key West. You have the tourist Key West and then you have like the real Key West where people live. And if you walk through the neighborhoods there, it's actually quite peaceful, very quiet and beautiful. So I just recommend checking it out. Now the next spot on my list I recommend you visit, I am pretty biased towards because I live here and that would be Miami. I personally live in Miami Beach, but I recommend visiting Miami as a whole. Miami Beach is just a small part of Miami and Miami itself is actually a separate city. You have Miami, which is on the mainland and Miami Beach is across the bay and we are our own separate city over here. However, there is so much to do and see in Miami. I really cannot name it all here in this video. And that's why it made it to this list because Miami is like sprawling. It's a huge city. We have some of the most beautiful beaches you could ever imagine. We have world-class museums and culture and art exhibits and pretty much anything you could imagine doing, you can do here in Miami. And that is just getting better and better and the experience here is just growing by the year, really, because we have so many amazing companies moving down here and setting up shop and turning Miami into more of a paradise than it already was before. I would really relate Miami to being sort of like the Las Vegas of the South, because it really does feel like a lot of times that it's a city that never sleeps. You know, we have all the beautiful lights at nighttime like Las Vegas does. A lot of places are open really late. A lot of the bars and restaurants here, it's not uncommon for them to be open till three or five in the morning. There are even a few places in downtown Miami that are literally 24 seven, like Club 11, I think it is. I mean, you can literally go to a nightclub 24 hours a day. I mean, how insane is that? 
And there are so many cool tours things to do here as well, like the Miami Duck Tours, uh, the Speedboat Tours. They have something called the Booze Cruise where you can get on a boat and pay like an upfront fee and it's like unlimited drinks for like a sunset cruise out on the Biscayne Bay. It's so cool. There's so many beautiful things to really see and do here. And you just have to come and visit Miami at least once in your life. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. And I offer one-on-one -on -one consulting calls if you're thinking of moving down here to Florida or you wanna know more about what it's like living here. The link for that is down in the description box below. Next up on my list is Destin, Florida. Now, I personally enjoy more of the surrounding areas of Destin, like Fort Walton Beach and a little bit over to the east, like right around the Rosemary Beach area and the little more quiet areas of the whole Florida panhandle there. But the reason why I put Destin on the list is because it's such a popular vacation spot for families in particular. So I'm looking at you families whenever you, you hear Destin here because there's a lot of really nice tourist attractions in Destin like uh, water parks and arcades and little uh, sideshows like with alligators and, and things like that. Top it off with the beaches being super beautiful there. They have the white sandy beaches and all of the hotels there are pretty nice as well and are very close to the beach. Now it is pretty expensive to stay there, especially during you know the high season, which is pretty common in most of these areas in Florida. But I feel like Destin is especially expensive even when it's not high season. I was there last April and May and it was still quite expensive and that's well after spring break. It's kind of like in between you know spring break and summer, so you would think it would have been cheaper, but it was still quite expensive. And so if you're into the beach and you don't really care so much about the tourist attractions, I do recommend staying more more towards Fort Walton Beach near Okaloosa Island. I don't know if I said that right. Over that way, that, that area is a lot more quiet. The beach is emptier and it's still very beautiful over there. Or if you have a lot of money and you're rich, you can stay in the seaside area or Rosemary Beach area. Over there is extremely elegant and the beaches are just as beautiful as Destin, but it is a pretty high-end place and very expensive. But Destin is the perfect spot right in the middle of those two if you have a family. Next is Siesta Key. And I really like Siesta Key a lot because it's kind of it kind of reminded me of Miami Beach where I live in the sense that it's its own little island and the beaches there are beautiful of course but the whole little downtown area is also pretty nice and very walkable so if you stay in Siesta Key you can just rent a hotel or an Airbnb whatever you find there and literally you probably wouldn't need a car the whole time you stayed there so I think that would be one of the coolest things about staying in Siesta Key because you'd be very close to the little downtown strip there and not too far away from the beaches and the beaches there have free parking and they're absolutely massive the beaches there I mean you park your car it probably takes like 15 minutes just to walk out to the sand because the beach is so wide and large there and it's just one of my favorite beaches in Florida and the town itself is quite charming. There's a lot of little restaurants down on the strip that have live music going pretty often, as well as just the whole look and character of the place, like with the colors and the small town vibe, even though it's very touristy. So it's quite a unique place in Florida to visit, and that's why it made it on my list. Daytona Beach. Now, some people don't like Daytona Beach. They think it's kind of trashy or not such a great place, but that wasn't my experience at all when I was there. I know it could be different for everyone, especially if you live there for a long time, but if you're just looking to visit, I think it's a really cool spot to visit. It's really well known for the Daytona Speedway, and they do have a ton of events there besides races, like they throw concerts there. Obviously, there are all kinds of races throughout the year there as well. So there's usually always something going on at the racetrack throughout the year that you can check out. But if you just want to check out Daytona as a town, the nice thing about Daytona, they have pretty much every type of chain restaurant or store that you're used to seeing pretty much everywhere else in the country. So you can feel a lot of familiarity but while taking a, a trip down here to Florida. And then as you get closer to the beach, you kind of lose a lot of those chain restaurants and things like that for more local businesses, which is great, of course. And the beaches there are actually pretty cool. 
The coolest thing about the beach in Daytona is that you're able to drive down the beach. They do charge a $20 fee, but it's like an all day pass and you can kind of come and go as you please. You know, you can pull up, drive on the beach and actually park and stay at the beach for a little while and then drive a little more or drive off the beach and come back later. It's just a pretty unique experience that you really don't get anywhere else in Florida. And for that reason, it made it to my list. Not far from Daytona is one of my favorite spots in Florida, which is St. Augustine, Florida. Now, I highly recommend you visit St. Augustine, mainly for its complete, unique character. The coolest thing about St. Augustine is that it is literally the oldest city in the United States. It was established, I think, around like the 1590s, something like that. And they have so many old buildings there, and they have an old fort there. It's really like taking a walk back in time going into St. Augustine. And I just think that is like one of the coolest things that, that we still have history that old preserved right here in Florida. And I, I really think you should visit St. Augustine just for the history alone. You got to take one of the train tours where they give you, you know, all the information about St. Augustine and some of the history. It was a really cool experience and it didn't cost a lot, maybe like 20 bucks a person. You can hop on and off that train all day long. And not to mention, the beaches in this area are pretty nice as well. I really did enjoy the beach a lot, going to the beach over here in St. Augustine. I think you could easily spend a good three or four days there as well, like Key West, and kind of see everything because it's a, quite a small area. And that would be a really nice short little vacation for you here in Florida, whether you live here or you're just looking to visit. Anna Maria Island. Now, my first impression of Anna Maria Island when I first got there, I really didn't like it that much because it seemed too much like South Beach, where I live in Miami Beach, at first, when I first got there. But after spending a couple hours there, I realized that it really is not like South Beach, and there is kind of like a crowded section of the beach that a lot of people go to there, but there are also other areas of Anna Maria Island that are not as crowded, and they do have a ton of of cool little mom and pop stores and restaurants and little ice cream shops there so that is really nice and it also kind of reminds me of siesta key because all the buildings are like that purple and green and blue color they give you really like that florida vibe when you go to anna maria island and one of the coolest things that i thought was neat about anna maria is when you go all the way to the northernmost point of anna maria island it's kind of like there's two different types of beaches and the water changes so much, even the current and everything. You kind of have like the beach side on one side and almost like the bay on the other side. And it's just a really unique beach experience that I thought was so neat. And it's definitely worth spending at least a day over there. I don't know if you really need to spend more time than that because it also is quite expensive, really no matter what time of year you go there anymore. So you have to watch out for that. Try to look for some good deals. But if you can stay there for a day or two, I highly recommend it. But if you can't afford it, stay in Bradenton across the bridge and then just take a drive over to Anna Maria because it's only about a 20 minute drive and it'll be worth your visit. Pass the Grill Beach. This place was such a happy accident for me on my road trip. I had never heard of this small little beach town before, but I ended up finding it by accident because the plan was to go to St. Pete Beach, but I believe it was the weekend, probably a Saturday or Sunday. I think it was actually Mother's Day, and St. Pete Beach was completely slammed. There was no parking. You couldn't find anywhere to stop in St. Pete Beach and actually go and enjoy it. So I just kept driving south and lo and behold, at the end of the island there where St. Pete Beach is, you will find Pasagril Beach. And this was such an awesome little happy accident. They had live music going on over by the sand. I'm not sure yeah. how often they do this. The beach it's itself awesome. is gorgeous. I really enjoyed it a lot. The town had some kind of like flea market or live little festival going on right down the main drag. It was really good. a surprise. I can't promise that it's always gonna be like this in Passa Grill but I think I got pretty lucky visiting when I did. It is quite difficult to find parking there as well, but definitely not as hard as St. Pete Beach. And to top it off, if you do have pets, the cool thing about Pasigril is on the other side of the island, they have a dog beach, so you can actually bring your dog to the beach without any trouble or worries from getting fined. And that's also just one of the perks of visiting Pasigril. 
The Villages. I know what you're thinking. The Villages is probably not the first place you would think of to visit as a tourist, but I think if you're doing a road trip through Florida and you're maybe visiting several of these spots, I highly recommend stopping in there at least for a day because, first of all, the hotel there is amazing. The Waterfront Inn was probably the best hotel I stayed at throughout the entire state of Florida because the room was very spacious, clean, and nice. The view was beautiful as well. The location was perfect because you can walk right outside the hotel over to a lot of the little bars and restaurants and to the town square that they have over there. And on top of that, the rate was pretty reasonable as well. So that was like the best thing about the villages was that little hotel, to be honest. But the fact that you can walk throughout the main village there was pretty cool as well. I think it's Lake Sumter. That's the area over there. And even though the Villages is typically known as like a retirement community, it was a fun spot to visit, even for somebody like me in my mid 30s, you know, seeing everybody there dancing and having such a good time at nighttime. And the fact that they have live music there every night is super entertaining. And the people there are so fun and easy to get along with. It feels just like being in Disney World, but for adults. So I think if you are in Florida and you're taking some sort of road trip, Definitely stay at least one night in the villages, if not maybe a couple, just to enjoy all the fun that they have going on there. Now I kind of intentionally left Orlando off of this list. Obviously it is an amazing place to visit. I will just go over real quick that obviously everybody knows there's Disney and Universal and a ton of other theme parks and tourist attractions there. But because it's so well known, I didn't really want it to be a large part of the video, but I figured it's an honorable mention considering it is the most popular place to visit in Florida. And obviously if you've never been there before, I highly recommend you have to go at least once there as well. Tampa, Florida. This one probably comes as no surprise. It is literally the hottest housing market in Florida in 2022, but that's not the reason it's on the list. The reason I think you should visit Tampa is because Tampa has a little something for everyone. If you're visiting with a family, there's Bush Gardens, they have a water parks there. You can definitely keep your bunch busy for a few days enjoying those attractions. If you're into the beach, you have Clearwater Beach and Honeymoon Island, one of my favorite areas in Florida over there to the west. The beaches over there are just gorgeous. I highly recommend checking them out and staying for the sunset. If you're into the city life, Tampa is a pretty decent mid-sized city that has a ton of brand new shops and restaurants opening up by the day it seems like and it's basically turning into a new Miami I feel like. So Tampa is kind of like a smaller version of Miami but with more traditional tourist attractions, I would say, and a little more geared towards families, but also great for single people as well. You know, there's a lot of younger singles in Very Tampa. Nice. I think Tampa just has a little bit of something for yeah, everyone, nice. and it's kind of like one of those yeah. jack of all trades cities now in Florida that you can visit and have a good time no matter where you're from or what you're looking to get out of your Florida vacation. If you guys enjoyed this video, you're gonna enjoy this one right over here about my 10 best places to live in Florida, and I'll see you guys over there.